going on people it is uh we just keep uh, we're just moving right along aren't we it's uh the second of january already and it's a sunday and um as i um, get ready to take my first sip i can tell yeah we're coming up about the first of the new year we're coming up about holiday um i can hardly tell that today is sunday but um thought i'd um come and spend a few minutes with you and do some do some do some polls um for you okay been thinking about this connection you know between myself and you and the world this is real people this is a real connection a short conversation i had last night on one of the video on one of my le recent videos you can see it um regarding um care concern for the way things are going this connection is real and I'm, I'm glad to know that there are other good people in the world because um we are dealing with a lot of stupidity and um i am patient with people but i am just i kind of decided that i don't need to be concerned about offending anyone I'm just going to say what's on my mind, okay? It's what I, it's what's in my realm, and I'm sharing it with you. It's not about whether or not you agree with me. That's not the issue. That's not the point at all. So, um, on music, um, I thought to pull this uh, at the last minute. Kind of forgot I had it. You too, New Year's Day. It was New Year's Day, and this is the double single that came out. My band, Digital Sex. When this came out in 1983, we covered it. Musically, we covered it really good. Vocally, not so good. You know, I don't mind saying that because it's the truth. But musically, we tore this up. We could play this really well. I love that bass line. I like U2. Early U2 is very good. So I spun that yesterday. And um, I haven't spun this again that's coming up okay I'm gonna riff and talk about music and what it, other things that are in my mind that I remember that I want to share I love this Miles Davis album and I just have no um, I don't agree with there's this sort of standard uh, record collectors attitude about Miles Davis in the 80s which is just bunk this album decoy is badass daryl jones who's been with the rolling stones forever pops like a mother on this and there's a couple parts here where miles does fire up and the other person on this album that is notable is john schofield on guitar this album is excellent all right cut the bullshit people what the thing that I'll notice in record collecting groups is listening to other people mimic opinions of critics. I've been thinking, huh, you ain't really listening to this. You just read some shit. Apple, an apple a day. A Guerson reissue. Thank goodness Guerson re has done so many reissues of these classic, really hard to find albums this album i just looked it up the other day there's one copy of an original on sale and it's going for over two thousand dollars now this is a really good um pop psychedelic album it really was overlooked it's like in the class of the beatles and the who and the hollies and all those bands back in the day they had one song on here that is people who know this music know it the other side classic took me a long time to finally get a copy of this album I'm quietly playing some of my music in the background um, just because some Charles Mingus 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 I actually put this on after watching um, the rest of um, the guy from Phoenix's two-hour video on his favorite high audio albums now see, if I had money like that, I would indulge. You know, I would buy 
multiple copies of stuff that's, you know, looking for the best quality, but I don't have the money, so I can't indulge that. And so what the deal was, I was checking to see if I had the version of this album that he was talking about, which it isn't. Went ahead and played it anyway. This version came out in 1995. The album originally came out in the 60s. But um, Mingus, powerful individual, amazing music. This is one that he brought up that I did have. And I was saying, yeah, let me pull this again. The Tone Poet series of reissues where they do the high quality everything. 180 gram, the tip-on jackets. You know what a tip-on jacket is. Um, um, I had to get that clarified because it's like I knew what they were, but I didn't quite realize that's the term. Stoughton tip-on jackets. And um, this is a lovely album. Lovely album, Wayne Shorter. Got to meet Wayne years ago. So I'm going to go back here and, and pull a couple records and say a few things, all right? So I'm just going to go right back here because I want to I want to kind of make a point in a, in a slight rant. So here, right here, this is K. So if you know King Crimson, you know that right here, the thing that the spine that you see is this, this box set that came out, the Essential King Crimson frame by frame. Uh, these are CDs, but I have it there with the rest of the... Uh, and then King Crimson USA right next to it. Beat. Okay. I have a lot of King Crimson. I don't have everything. But we go past King Crimson, and then we get into... Uh, Kingdom, Kingdom Come, and I have Arthur Brown records in this um, um, spot too, just for convenience, Arthur Brown and Kingdom Come together. Arthur Brown paved the way for a lot of progressive and other kinds of music, he did, and he's still going. This album is a classic, The Crazy World of Arthur Brown. Yeah, I got two copies of this motherfucker, I sure do. This is, uh, yeah, this is important. We'll go a little further. I've shown Richard Kirk. Richard Kirk. How about some Rasan Roland Kirk? Okay. The man with the, the, the multiple reeds. Here's something you probably don't know anything about. How, how do you say her name? I got this um, Koharu Kisaragi. I got this because it's produced by Sakamoto, but it's really good. Really good. And then we get into Clot 2. The, the band that people at first thought were the Beatles. If you were listening, you know right away, it wasn't the Beatles, it was Beatles S, that wasn't the Beatles. Okay, but let me go a little bit further here because I want to make a point here. So over here, on this side here, of the uh, split, oh, okay, we'll start here with some, with some Polish jazz. Someone sent this to me, Krzysztof Komita, the uh, composer. Excellent. He did the um, soundtrack for Rosemary's Baby. Very creepy movie. Great soundtrack. We'll keep going here. I forget the story behind this album, but this is uh, Kong Lavering was sent to me. Uh, Oslo, Norway. This is folk music. And uh, I really haven't gotten into it, but I keep it. Someone sent it to me. I think I understand this is an important album. Uh, speaking of that, a French band, Common Turn. This is very much about 
um, how, what they're saying about society. And so there's a lot of this that I, that I miss because I don't speak French, but I wanted this in my collection. Excuse me. And musically, it is interesting, but this is definitely about the story. It's about what they're saying. And then we keep going. And look what I have. Cool in the gang, good times. Now I'm going to rant because on the live feed, I got asked this several times, and it was... It can seem like a troll, but what it is is stupidity. And I've been dealing with this since I was a child, when people see the records that I listen to and when I play, and they start asking me these stupid questions. Well, don't you have a cool in the gang? Don't you have Earth, the Wind, and Fire? Don't you have Sly and the Family Stone? Don't you know that I know what you're asking me and what you're asking me is really stupid and ignorant? And I've dealt, dealt with this my entire life. I don't have to prove to you my blackness. That don't, that don't have that don't have shit to do with being real. It's so stupid. It does irritate the fuck out of me because I've been dealing with this my whole life. It, just think about it. When I was a kid, one day I got caught walking home and I had a Beatles album under my arm and I got beat up for it. Get beat up by other black kids because you're listening to a white band. How insane! So when people ask me those questions about um, black music as though I'm supposed to listen to it, that's some bullshit. And it's stupid. I love my people. I have laid my life on the line literally several times for specifically black people, but also for all people. So I'm not having this shit. It's stupid. Love Cool in the Gang. I got a Cool in the Gang story. My older brother James, hope he's doing okay. Great artist. Back in the 70s, see I get, time gets all fuzzy. There was a nightclub that got opened here in Omaha called King Solomon's Mine. And Jackie, I forget his last name, he was a shady character. Of course, anybody that has money is shady to me. He hired my brother James to decorate the uh, place basically for nothing. He got my brother James to do uh, amazing artwork and paid my brother James next to nothing. I got paid nothing. I was James's assistant. I was, I'm was. i his little brother. I'm not doing nothing at summertime. What was I, maybe 13 or 14? So I was roped into being his um, assistant. Anyway, James was working on this one mural and Jackie was really bugging him to hurry up and finish it because it was in the main room and they were going to have one of their first big shows there, which was going to be Cool and the Gang, back before Cool and the Gang were known. The early Cool and the Gang albums are to die for, especially that first album. I've still got the singles from it, Raw Hamburger and all that stuff. Funkier and shit. So anyway, my brother forced me to work really hard almost all day to finish this mural, but I couldn't go to the show that night. It was horrible, it was, you know. But I went down to the club anyway and stood outside the fire escape doors next to the stage so I could hear Cool and the Gang play. So I didn't get to see them, but I saw, I heard the original Cool and the Gang and they were ripping it up, okay? So I know that I'll encounter this foolishness some more, but for you folks who need to hear this, that's some bullshit, this idea that somebody has, is not black enough. That is really ignorant. And it goes around still. It's, it's foolish, okay? It's bullshit. Okay. And we'll look at the very next thing. You know, it's like, it's like, so we go from Cool and the Gang to Turkey. Erkin Kore. Electric, electronic Turkuler. You people that bother me about Earth, Wind, and Fire and shit, do you know about this? Can you talk to me about this? See, so I just want y'all to shut the fuck up. I have a right to this feeling, to this anger. I've been dealing with this ignorance all my life. So if any of you who have never met me want to get offended and respond with something fiery, check yourself. Because what I'm saying is correct. Correct. 
I've been dealing with this bullshit all my life. Reverse racism crap. Corgus, do you know this? They had that big hit, everybody's got to learn sometime. Uh, the main guy from this band was in Stackridge before this. I like Stackridge too. Okay. All right. Up here in my ease. In my ease. In my ease. Just. Yeah, I want to make this point now and forever. Of course, it won't. In the. Um, Streams. People kept asking me about this band, Earthless. I don't think they're that special. They're they're good. It's psychedelic. I like it. I can do this. I could I can make a whole I could make a whole Earthless album on all the instruments if I had access. No, I'm not bragging. I'm telling you this. I really could. If I had unlimited access to a, a recording studio that was kitted out with all the instruments and an engineer so I could go and play each instrument one at a time, I could create an Earthless. A lot of records, actually. I could do it. I could play all the instruments. Let's keep going. Ease. I'm, I'm still making my point. Do you catch me? Next, what? Earth and Fire? Atlantis? Um, Dutch band, are they? Are they Dutch? Love it. It's pop and prog. This one is very pop. So I don't really listen to this one, but I keep it. Earth and Fire, Reality, Hills Fantasy. The one of theirs that I really like is this one, Song of the Marking, Marching Children. This is great. It also has a cool inner cover because it's neat. They give you the all black outside and then you open it up. Nice, huh? I like this. I'm in my ease here. I got some of my music in the background. You can't really hear it, but it's just kind of bubbling away softly. The next E is Earth Opera, the Great American e Eagle Tragedy. Kind of more on the folk bluegrass side here, but this is a good album, very interesting. Electronic, Earth Star, French Skyline. This is really good on the Sky label. Related to wire, ear trumpet. This I don't I don't see this, but this was produced by um, one of the fellows from from wire, um, or is involved. The B C Gilbert from wire is involved. This is kind of different. It's good. And what do I have next here? What's next to ear trumpet? Earth, wind, and fire. So you bitches, just shut the fuck up with that that stupid question. You listen. You really, really irritate me. You really sound stupid. Seriously, get the message, okay? That's tighten your wigs up, okay? That don't mean nothing. Whether or not somebody listens to Earth, Wind, and Fire about their blackness or their identity. How ridiculous! Earth, Wind, and Fire. Head to the sky. I was listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire before y'all motherfuckers probably knew anything about them. Um, they're just up from up the way, Chicago. Um, people I know knew know Earth, Wind, and Fire. So we got turned on to them like immediately. Same thing with Jim, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Um, Terry Lewis has a, a Omaha roots from uh, the time in Prince. So we were hearing about that shit, okay, from the from the word go. It's more Earth, Wind, and Fire. Which one is this? Um, all in all. Okay, so y'all, you see what I'm trying to say? Now we get we get into the, if we get into my 45s, which I don't ever show, I can really show you. I can go deep on some black music and history with 45. So. You, so get the message, okay? Let me alone, okay? Earth, wind, and fire. Spirit, okay? Another reason why I'm so irritated is because I'm so aware of 
the biggest, some of the biggest problems that the world is facing right now, in particular the pandemic and politics, is because of stupidity and ignorance. So I'm just, I'm really, I'm really fed up with stupid people. East of Eden. The violin player on here was the violin player on the big hit Baba O'Reilly by The Who. This is a uh, double reissue of Mercator Projected and another of their albums, Things. It's not mastered very good, so I have a good CD version of Mercator Projected. That's one of my favorite albums of all time, East of Eden's Mercator Projected. And I recently found this old 60s, late 60s, early 70s album that I always wondered about. East Side Kids, this is really good. I couldn't tell what it is. And it's a mixture of styles, soul, rock. It's really good. So, 20 minutes goes by quick, folks. Share your thoughts with me. Listen to what I said earlier, okay? And I'll recap it. So that if you happen to be one of the people who gets triggered by what I said, check yourself. You got triggered on for a reason, not because I did something. It's about you. Check yourself, okay? Get to know yourself better and raise your bar, okay? I'm working on mine. So, see, I talk like this because you don't know what I personally am up against. You don't see my life behind this screen, so you don't see my personal challenges, and I have them. And I am handling them. I'm managing them. And I don't hurt people. And I'm not shitty and stupid to people. And I'm saying that needs to change. And if you're one of those people that does that shit, check yourself and do better. I'm glad that the majority of people who come here are intelligent, seemingly mature, and have hearts, because those are the kind of folks that I want to be around. I'm not running a popular con popularity contest. I do not care if you subscribe. I, I note it. I noted, I noticed that since I did my live um, streams, uh, my uh, subscribe count has gone down. So, if you're that easily offended, I don't really want you around. I want to be around quality people that can think. Okay? So, uh, get with it. Get with it, okay? Don't be one of the dumbasses. I am not interested in dumb fucks who the best thing they can do is tell a joke. Even amongst my friends, my musician friends, and, and they'll, uh, they'll take it for me because they're my friends. Even my friend Blake, you know, we have great conversations and then there'll be times where we'll have a good laugh and then there'll be times when it's like, okay, it's enough. And these people will still be acting like jokers and I'll be saying, okay, y'all get your dumb asses the fuck out of my face. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about. We, again, take a look at what's happening in this world. We really need to raise our shit up. <laughs> we need to, need to do better. So that's what the message is all about, message is about okay? I'm trying. You try to, and talk to me.